Hello everyone, this is Danny from creatingwebstore.com and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a downloadable product in PrestaShop. First off, this tutorial will also cover how to diagnose certain errors with downloadable products. This is actually the most common issue when uh, trying to upload a product or a download I should say to PrestaShop because uh, what happens is if your server isn't configured correctly uh, you'll experience errors. So to fix this, what you do is you actually have to modify your settings. But let's start first with uh, creating a downloadable product by going to Catalog, and then Products, and then simply click on Add New Product. Next, simply select Virtual Product from the list. Now simply enter in the name of your product. In this case, mine will be Jazz Music Single. If you uh, have a site that's running in multiple languages, simply select the other language from the list. Enter in a reference code if you'd like, EAN or JAN barcode if you'd like, or UPC barcode. Decide whether this item is enabled or disabled. Visible, where is it visible? Catalog, search, nowhere, everywhere. In my case, it will be everywhere. Is the product available for download? Uh, do you want the price to be shown? that you can uh, decide on if the product isn't available for a download. Enter in a short description, long description, add tags if you'd like. I actually have a video on uh, how to create a standard product in PrestaShop and that video goes over a lot of these fields in a lot more detail than I will be going through in this video because here I'm just uh, focusing on uh, showing you how to create a downloadable product and I'm not really focusing a lot on these other fields right now because I already covered them in another video so if you need these fields covered in more detail you might want to look at my other video after you're finished watching this one simply click on save and state now go to prices the wholesale price is what this is costing you this is actually not displayed to your customers so if you want to enter this in this is up to you the retail price is what you charge your customers. In my case, it will be $9. If you'd like to add tax to the item, simply do so. If not, simply select no tax. As for unit price, if you'd like to specify the price per unit, for example, if you're uh, selling a music album with multiple tracks, I guess you can uh, enter in the unit price here. For example, if it's 12 tracks, you would enter in $1 if that's what each track costs and here you would type in track so it would be one dollar per track and this would actually show up on the product listing page but since I'm actually listing a single I'm going to leave this empty as for whether you'd like to display this item on sale with an on sale icon simply select this box if you'd like to leave it unchecked if you do not want to click save and state now let's move on to SEO here for the meta title I'll just leave it empty because uh, PrestaShop will auto generate this information for me. As for the meta description I'll simply enter in a meta description. When finished simply click on save and state. Next go to associations. Simply click on expand all to view all your categories and then select the category. Since I don't have a category for downloads I'm going to create one here and this will be downloads like so and it will be in the root home and I'll skip the whole description and all of that to save time and I'll click on save and now I'll go back to my catalog and simply continue with my product and here it is and I'll select downloads as a default category and I won't be adding any accessories because I don't have any matching items so now I'll click on save and state and I'll go to quantities here I will enter in a quantity in my case it will be a very large number since I have unlimited downloads available so as for minimum uh, quantity it will be a set at one and I'll leave the display text and display the uh, back ordering text as is empty. So I'll simply click on save and stay here and I'll move on to virtual product. So click on virtual product. 
So this is where the fun begins and since we're uh, creating a downloadable product we will select yes for does this product have an associated file and then simply add your file in my case it's this one right here the jazz music file and number of downloads allowed here you can enter in how many times your customer can uh, download this product set to zero for unlimited if you want to limit it to maybe two or three or four whatever simply enter in that number there and the expiration date uh, the amount of time that they have to download the product and the uh, number of days how many days they can uh, download the product again zero for unlimited and simply click on save and state so as you can see I got the error file jazz music mp4 is missing server file name colon and then I have this other uh, alphanumeric string here so to fix this problem what we first need to do is we need to change a class within PrestaShop afterwards what we need to do is we need to create a php.ini file if our web host set our uh, upload uh, file size limit too low and also there's a post uh, max size limit that is might also have been set too low so let's first start by changing the class within PrestaShop so simply open up your FTP client then go to classes in the directory that PrestaShop is in so go to the root directory where PrestaShop is in and then go to classes and then simply go down to the file uploader.php and simply view and edit or you know depending on your FTP client use whatever function is needed to edit the file in my case this is the file right here and what you need to do is you need to go here where it says class uploader core and then there's a curly bracket here and where you have the constant default max size simply enter in the default max size for example by default you have this number right here which is in bytes which is actually 10 uh, megabytes so what you need to do is you need to figure out the maximum size of your files for example when you're listing downloads you really need to think of what is the largest file that you'll upload and then simply change this number so that it accommodates your downloads for example what I'll do here I already know that this number right here is 10 megabytes so I'll simply copy it and paste it into my calculator here and for example if I want 30 megabytes I'm simply going to multiply this by 3 like so and I'll get that number and I'll simply copy that number and paste it here and I'll simply save my file and then I'll upload my file so my uploader.php file finished uploading and now what I'd like to do is I'd like to make sure that these other values are correct which is uh, post max size and I also want to double check whether the upload max file size is correct because if not I still will have uh, trouble uploading files so to do this what I need to do is I need to go back to the root directory of my Presta shop and here what I'll do is I'll create a new file and this new file will be called info.php and I'll click OK and then I'll simply edit this file view and edit of course uh, again you'll probably do this in a different way if you have a different FTP client and here what you need to do is you need to make sure that you have a PHP tag echo PHP info function semicolon and uh, PHP end tag you can actually get this code on my site creatingawebstore.com and the link to that page is in the description of this video so once you are finished simply uh, make sure those changes to that info.php file and then simply go to your uh, Presta shop admin panel here and in your browser simply open up a new tab and then simply go to your domain forward slash info.php and then simply look for the section post underscore max underscore size here and as you can see here you can tell whether the size is correct and as you can see my size is incorrect since it's at 16 megabytes so the solution to this problem with many web hosting uh, companies is to add a php.ini file in your root directory the directory that Presta shop is located in and to do that you simply create a new file and you name that new file php.ini and you simply edit that file 
and you simply enter in that file upload underscore max underscore file size equals 30m or whatever that number is. Now keep in mind that the number should actually be larger than the largest file that you plan on uploading. And also remember to change the post max size. For example, this post max size should be the same as the upload max file size. And then afterwards, simply go to your info.php file and simply refresh and simply look for these uh, values right here. And if they have changed, it's fine. If they haven't, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to change your php.ini file to php5.ini and see if the changes take effect afterwards. And if they don't, you might also want to wait a couple of minutes because some servers actually cache those files. And once that number has changed, it means that you can upload files that are as large as whatever is specified here in this php.ini file. Now, uh, if you still can't change these values on your own, the next solution is to simply contact your web hosting company and ask them to raise this limit for you. And after that limit has been raised, keep in mind that you still have to change that file that I showed you earlier, the uploader.php file within the classes folder because uh, PrestaShop actually changes the upload max upload file size limit there as well. So it's like uh, an obstacle here. You, you know, you have to first change the limit on your server and then you also have to change the limit where PrestaShop actually changes it in the uploader class. So afterwards, simply go back to your admin panel and simply try uploading that file again, like I will now. So as you can see, my file uploaded successfully and now I even have the link to the download file and I can also delete the link if I'd like and now I can move on to images. And here for images, I'll simply add a new image and that will be this image right here and I'll click on upload and I'll click on save and stay and then I'll go to features and here if you'd like you can create new features or use the existing features to create a new feature simply click here and in the future prior to adding products you can actually create features over here features actually show up in the data sheet section of the product listing page for example it shows up right here in this section in this case I won't be adding any features so I'll save and state as for customization if you'd like people to be able to uh, upload uh, files and text when uh, purchasing the product you can add a file field by simply entering the number. For example, if you want one file field, you enter in one. If you want two, you enter in two. And same goes for text field. Uh, personally, I can't see how this can really be used with downloadable products, but either way, if you want to add it, simply add it. And then click on Save and State. And then simply add a label and decide whether this is required. For example, in the label here, this would be for the file field. You can uh, enter in something like upload your image and here you can enter in uh, something like tell us what text you want us to add on your item or whatever, you know. Add your text and then click on save and state. And next you can go to attachments and here if you'd like to add an attachment you can. For example, I will enter in a name and what I can do is I can add a sample track here and I will add the file and as you can see my file has uploaded successfully and I simply click on add and I click on save at state and now if you'd like you can uh, add a supplier by clicking on this link right here and checking off your supplier or you can create a new one or you can even create a supplier here prior to uh, listing your products by going to catalog suppliers and if you'd like to add product references after you add the supplier you can add product references down here and when finished simply click on save 
and now you can view your item in your store and here it is and as you can see all of the information is here and there's my sample track and there are my customization fields and basically that's that so thanks for watching stay tuned for more videos and also be sure to check out creatingawebstore.com